Well, hello there, my lovelies. Welcome to Barefoot HQ on a very blustery Saturday afternoon. Um, today I thought I'd do a video with a difference. Um, I wanted to do a video on how to build an altar on a budget. Um, because too many times I've actually come across people who thought that actually building an altar was going to be an expensive affair. And to be honest with you, my lovelies, it isn't. Building an altar is not an expensive thing to do. So I thought today I would try and share this with you and, and try and show you how I build my altars um, as cheaply as you can because I'm a bit of a skinflint I don't like spending money unless I have to so I'm going to walk you through it as best I can and hopefully this will be a bit helpful for somebody so how to build an altar on a budget okay so the first thing you need to decide is where am I going to put my altar you can have it anywhere you like. You can have it in your living room. You can have it in your kitchen. You can have it in your bathroom, your hallway. Um, you could have it in your bedroom, um, a conservatory. You can even have it in a summer house if, if that's, you know, where you want it. Um, it doesn't really matter where you put them. Just decide where you want to put your altars. Most of mine are in my living room where I can see them and I can get to them. Uh, then you need to decide what your altar is going to be for. So is it going to be for Sabbath altars so that you could build eight little Sabbaths throughout the year on an altar, which is what I do. I've put a couple of mine up on, up on the channel. The last one I did was Ostara. Um, is it going to be... A witchy altar like this is it going to be a deity altar are you going to have it as a kitchen witch altar put that in your kitchen so the themes for an altar are endless it, whatever you want it for whatever you want to work with whatever you want it for it's up to you it's entirely up to you it's your altar if that's what you want you have it then you need to decide what you're going to build it on. You need to decide, you need to find something that A, is a flat surface and B, it's fairly sturdy. So anything like a bookcase, uh, this, my witchy one here is on my bookcases. So you've got your bookcases, um, my crystal ones are on my cupboards, my frail one over there, that's on a, another bookcase. Um, sideboards, cupboards, if you're going to put it in the kitchen, you could have it on a work surface. Um, if it's going up in the bathroom, you could, I don't know, put it on a windowsill or build a little shelf. Even windowsills are fine. As long as the surface is flat and you can put things on and they're not going to fall off and it's sturdy, anything will work. You don't have to go out and buy a, a special unit, just whatever's in your home. So we've worked out where we're going to put it. We've worked out what we're going to use it for. And then we've worked out what we're building it on. This is the fun part. This is the bit that I love doing. So if working from the bottom upwards, altar cloths. <laughs> it's entirely up to you if you want to use an altar cloth. You can or you don't have to. I personally prefer an altar cloth because A, it ties in with the theme that I'm doing it for and B, it stops the surface that you're using getting scratched because especially if you put in rough cut crystals down, they can tend to scratch a surface. So, altar cloths. Please don't think you've got to rush out to your nearest crystal shop, metaphysical shop, 
Tiamu, Amazon, whoever you're buying your stuff off and buy the most expensive altar cloth you can possibly find. Please don't think you've got to do that because you haven't. This is building an altar on a budget and this is using whatever you've got to hand and whatever you can afford. So, that one, that that is an actual wall hanging, believe it or not, and it was bought for me by my daughter. <coughs> Excuse me. And I folded that in half and used it because it fitted quite nicely on that cabinet there. My, change around, my um, Freya altar, the top covering is actually a green scarf I bought from Primark in a sale. And that is a small wall hanging. I think I had that from Wish and that was something, I don't know, like a couple of quid or something daft. Use whatever you've got to hand if you've got, I don't know, old duvets that will tie in with that thing that you're no longer using anymore. Cut them up. If, like me, you're an avid collector of scarves and you've got some that will fit, tie in with the theme of your altar, cut them up. Put them down. They're fine. It doesn't have to be a certain cloth. It doesn't have to be something expensive i put bandanas down on my black bandanas um i've bought things like um christmas table runners in the sale in january for that should have been about eight pound and went down to two and i've put them to one side because i'm thinking that'll be really nice as part of my altar my my uh, my christmas altar whatever whatever you want it's entirely up to you you do not have to go out and buy expensive altar cloths to cover your altar with. Believe me, you don't have to. Don't care what anybody tells you. Whatever you can afford and whatever ties in with the theme and whatever you can find. Charity shops are a great source for things like that. Buy it. It's your altar. You do what you like with it. Don't let anybody tell you any difference. So, you've worked out where you put your altar. You've worked out what kind of theme you want to use for your altar. You've worked out what you're going to use as an altar. You've found your altar cloth. Fun bit. This is the fun bit. Right. <laughs> I love things like this. Okay, so we're going to work with my witchy altar because this is the most. This is the one that's got the most stuff on. So, if you are going to make an altar for a theme. Don't think you've got to go out and buy the most expensive stuff that you can possibly buy. There's only you and your family that are going to see this altar. You're not going to get queues around the block coming to marvel at it. It's just, it's yours. Nobody's going to ridicule you for buying cheap stuff. Don't worry about it. Whatever your pennies can afford, whatever you can source. So, let's go through this. The candles, I'll try to use my finger to point. So the candles here, the candle holders, I think they're a Nemesis now. Now I only bought those because I was given some money for a birthday years ago and I wanted some nice candle holders. So that's where they came from. The star, which is my absolute pride and joy, was £3.50 from the YMCA charity shop in Tamworth. It had one glass cup missing. Fortunately, I had a spare one. It may not be the same as the others, but I had a spare one. £3.50, lovelies. My days. You can't, you couldn't write it, could you? Um, let's have a look. These skulls, there's one... I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get this to work. <laughs> there's one here. Where we go? There. There's one there, look. And then we've got one there. Now... These were marked up at £25 where my partner works at a garden centre. He came home with them one day and he said they were throwing them out. So he rescued them and I think he paid £5 for the pair. They are heavy garden ornaments and the only thing that was wrong with them was the paint was flaking off the top. And to me that didn't matter. It added character. So again... They were rescued from the skip and he paid £5 for them. 
Uh, I don't know if you can see the glass bottles there. Look, can you see those? They were two pound each from a charity shop in Tamworth. Because you know they looked nice. I liked them. Witchy lady, can you see my witchy lady? She was a Christmas present last year's Christmas present from my daughter. She's got a sister in the in the crystal shop in town. I'm gonna have to go and buy her. But I've saved my pennies up. Cauldron, that was a gift from my daughter. My um, crystal ball, that was a gift. The witchy woman is supposed to be a fridge magnet. A couple of quid from a crystal shop. The crow's skull, it's not really. It's one of those three D printed art things that I bought from um, a craft fair a few last year I think he was a fiver the mortar and pestle that was a gift my daughter bought me that and then my two witchy ladies they were a fiver each that I've bought from craft fairs so to be honest with you it just goes to show that you really don't need to spend an awful lot of money you can you can request stuff for you know birthdays christmas mother's day father's day easter whatever um you don't need to buy expensive stuff candles are another thing candles i think make an altar they're cheap you can either buy tea lights or you can buy colored candles you know for the seasons you don't even have to go to a crystal shop to buy them anywhere does them Home bargains do them. Um, I don't know, as to do them. Just, you know, when you've got your seasonal stuff in, like you've got Easter and Christmas and things like that, bulk, bulk buy them. You can get a box of candles for two quid. Bulk buy them. And I always think candles make an altar. Once you've got them lit, they give you that warm sort of ambiance feel to it. Um let's look at this one this is my um well I'll just call it a crystal altar if you like this is where i dump the crystals <laughs> these boxes i did a uh barefoot craft video a couple of years ago on these boxes now these boxes i bought from the works i think they were six pound a box i painted them I bought the little tester pots from Wilkinson's when Wilkinson's were open for three pound each. Okay, two colours. So I painted them. Then I bought some stickers. Shall we say fifteen pound for two boxes? I cut. I keep my crystals in there. The wooden leaf dish that was on sale at Wilkinson's. That was, I don't know, three or four pound. And then the crystals are what I've collected doing Lucky Dip things. You know, the Lucky Dip bags. My local crystal shop does them. Um, when we do the craft fairs, there's lots of places that do Lucky Dip bags now. And believe me, we've just been and we've bought two Lucky Dip bags for five pound each. And some of the stuff in there that we picked up were eight pound. So you get three items and one of them was already £8. So, you know, you are getting a bargain. So <laughs> do things like this, you know, chuck your crystals in, make it look pretty. Again, cheap and cheerful. Um, Freya, my, my beloved Freya. Um, this is a mishmash. So the altar cloth is a scarf. The incense holder is a Viking dragon boat I had from Wish that was st stupid money. Um, that is actually a birthday card that I bought a frame for. That was a couple of quid. That's an offering bowl. That was a couple of quid from a charity shop. Uh, candles from Poundland. The glass dishes were free. That my daughter had had one of these, you know, like puddingy type things in, and that was free. Um, plastic cup, seventy-five p. And um, Freya, she's the most expensive. She cost me £12 from Amazon. So, you know. There again, it does not cost me much to make these altars up. 
Um, let's go and have a look at my other one, bear with. So this altar, again, is dedicated to crystals, knickknacks and bits and bobs. Um, again, the boxes were from the works, the same ones. I just took the drawers out and painted them. And then all these little bits here, what I collected over the years, and just sort you know from looking at bags and stuff and just sort of put them together these guys these are stone um and they were a pound each from pound labs little stone ornaments so i bought the see no he evil hear no evil speak no evil there you go it's added decoration that was five pound from asta during halloween same as that five pound from asta during halloween more rocks so it just goes to show lovelies that you really 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 don't need to spend an awful lot of money on building an altar the key things you've got to remember is number one it's your altar you can build whatever you like you can put on it whatever you like you can make things for it you can dedicate it to whatever you like this is your altar and nobody is to tell you any different remember that you're the person putting the time the money and the effort into doing it secondly the things you put on them do not have to cost you a fortune you can source them from charity shops you can source them from sales when the seasonal items are going out when they're making room for the next seasonal gimmick you can get them from, you can request them for birthdays, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Easter, Christmas, that kind of thing. You can go charity shop hunting, which I'm a massive fan of because you can get all kinds of weird and wonderful stuff from there. Um, sales are another one. Keep your eye out for a good sale. You know, you don't have to spend an awful lot of money to build it. And the nice thing about it is as well, if you've got yourself a simple altar, over time you can upgrade it so you can buy, I don't know, a better a better skull, a better crystal, a be better candle holders. You can upgrade them. Once you've saved your pennies up, you can do it. So I hope that's slightly helpful, lovelies. Um, I just wanted to put it out there on, on you know, trying to explain to people that building an altar is not an expensive game it can be done quite happily and quite easily on a budget so i'll leave you to think about it if by any chance you've managed you've got an altar or you're in the middle of building an altar and you'd like to share it please do either chuck it on the end of this video or whack it up on the barefoot pagan facebook group I love looking at people's altars. I think they're amazing and every altar is different and every altar means something. So yeah, if you've got some altars and you want to share, please feel free to. Right. So then, I hope you all have a wonderful Saturday afternoon, my lovelies. Uh, and from all of us, including Miss Lou, who's falling asleep in her bed, look, bless her in the sunshine. <laughs> We are sending you all much love and many blessings.